Let's get right to our CBC News team on the ground. As I mentioned, Susan Ormiston now part of the team and is going to be covering the conflict for us. And there you see Susan in the near Oz kibbutz. She's been given access by the Israeli military to that kibbutz right near the border that was the site of one of the horrific deadly attacks on October the 7th. Susan, good morning. Really looking forward to your coverage. And my goodness, what a backdrop. Tell us more about where you are and what happened there. Well, it's a pretty sobering sight here. This is the kibbutz of Nir Oz, one of the first kibbutzes that the Hamas militants stormed in, attacked. And as you can see, people lived here two weeks ago. This is a home completely torched. This was one of the strategies of the militants when they rushed in here. They set these homes on fire, smoking the residents out of here, many of whom were hiding in their so-called safe rooms. Every residence in this kibbutz has one. Some of them were locked, some of them weren't. We knew there were 400 people living here that morning, early morning, and a hundred of them are still unaccounted for missing, either dead or taken as hostages two kilometers away into Gaza. We can still hear air attacks by the Israeli Defense Forces and machine gun fire towards Gaza, just two kilometers from here. This is not the only house here that looks like this. Absolutely destroyed. We don't know exactly who lived here or what exactly happened to them, but we know that many were killed, perhaps as many as 50 or 80. We also know that in this kibbutz, there were people out and about early morning, and one of them was a Canadian woman and her husband, Heather. A Canadian woman and her husband, one of the 400 living in the kibbutz. Do we know anything, Susan, about what has befallen her? So her name is Judy Weinstein, and we've been speaking to her daughter who lives in Singapore, and she tells us that her mother and her father were taking an early morning walk outside their home here in the kibbutz, and they came upon the militants. They were stopped. They were shot. The father was injured. Judy was able to call her daughter and say that they were under attack, and they were talking, and then the phone went dead. Later, much later, Israeli authorities told the daughter in Singapore that they believe that Judy Weinstein, a Canadian citizen, is captive in Gaza. Why? Because they haven't found her body here, and also because pings from her phone were intercepted in Gaza. Could be that she is there, could be that her phone was confiscated to Gaza. We don't know. We spoke to a man who lived here during the attack. His name is Ron, and he told us that he knows Judy Weinstein. Here's a bit of what he said. We don't know. Judy and um, Gadi, you know, they were like a sportsman. Every morning, around 6 o'clock, 6.30, every day they used to go out to make the first walking tour. They walk a lot, they do a lot of activity. The only thing that we know is that around six o'clock they start, they walk, they went out on the south gate. Later on, they call, and Judy mentioned they called to the guys that um, in response to the emergency here to Ari Itzik, and she told him, God is injured, and that's the last connection that we know from them. The last connection. So many stories like that from people like Ron. And this, as I said, is not the only house that looks like this. We are keeping tabs on Judy Weinstein and her husband as this conflict develops, as we learn more, and we'll keep you up to date. But Heather, I can tell you standing here, wow, you can smell the soot, the burn. You can see there's absolutely nothing left of this house. Ron told us that the members of this kibbutz are absolutely determined to do two things. Never let Hamas militants get here again and rebuild their homes.